Welcome to this video walkthrough of a real life exploit. We will have a look at a JavaScript framework called AngularJS. You can use that to create fancy modern web apps. While the concept is pretty cool, the framework suffers from kind of a design issue. Any exploit I will show in this video was not found by me. References and credits are in the description and displayed here. And a big thank you to Mario from Q53 and Gareth Hayes from Portswigger Web Security Blog. Most of what I show is based on their research and work. In the first part, I will give a very quick introduction to how to write apps with AngularJS. If you haven't used it before, take some time and follow a simple tutorial to understand it better. For example, the official AngularJS getting started tutorial. And after we had a look at a simple AngularJS example, I will explain my setup here and how we can debug AngularJS. So that in part two, we can focus on stepping through the code of an older version of AngularJS, where we try to bypass the sandbox and learn more about the Angular internals. And then in another video, we will then show off some more advanced sandbox escapes for more recent versions. But let's start. I have written a very simple AngularJS testbed, meaning a place where you can easily play around with Angular. Let's start by looking at an AngularJS example app. Look at this table. On the left, you can see AngularJS expressions in double curly braces, basically how you would write them into your HTML. And on the right, you can see the result after AngularJS evaluated those expressions. And I've made here several examples with a variable username and some functions. Also note that the alert function did not trigger a pop-up. The result is empty. But where do those values, variables and functions come from? Let's have a look at the HTML source code. Just to make it clear again, AngularJS is a pure JavaScript framework. So there is no server part. Um, all those expressions are evaluated on the client side in the browser after the HTML page got downloaded. Here you can see now that we use AngularJS version 1.57. And then we create a new Angular application with the name scope example, and then attach a controller to it with the name my controller. We can pass different variables to the controller, but most important to us is the scope. The scope is just an object from AngularJS, which is available inside the app. And you can see in the code we write that all variables and functions we define are attached to that scope. They are property of that scope object. And when we look again at our table where we use the double curly braces to get the username, AngularJS will basically evaluate the expression and check if the identifier username exists in the current scope. In this case, there is a username in the scope and it contains the string world, thus the result is world. Similar with the function say hello. The scope has this function attached and thus we can call that function within the expression. But alert is not in the scope. We didn't define that. So this function doesn't exist and thus has an empty result. Two more things I want to point out. The first column has also curly braces, but they are not evaluated because they have the ng non-bindable attribute set. That deactivates the AngularJS for that element. The other thing is the $evil. This is not the normal JavaScript evil function, it's $evil. Again, this is evaluated against the scope. We didn't define the function $evil ourselves, but AngularJS has it already attached to the scope object. And that $evil is similar to regular JavaScript evil, but it doesn't evaluate arbitrary JavaScript, it evaluates AngularJS expression. Thus $evil say hello is equivalent to double braces say hello. Double braces also evaluate AngularJS expressions. Okay, now let's dive in. Let's open the testbed for AngularJS version 1.08, which is very old, but we need that to understand later exploits. So this is a very simple PHP app. If you look at the source code, you can see a form where you can enter a text and then whatever is the get variable Q will be HTML escaped and safely echoed into the page. You can see that when you try to inject the script tag to pop alert, it doesn't work. It's properly escape. So are we safe from XSS, from cross-site scripting? No, we are not. 
AngularJS destroys everything that we have taught web developers. Escaping your string is not enough in this case. The crucial detail here is that our input is reflected into an HTML element that has AngularJS enabled. Two things to mention here. First of all, this is not how AngularJS apps are supposed to be written. AngularJS apps should not be mixed with server-side templating, meaning that the intended way for AngularJS apps to get data is via API calls after the static HTML site is loaded. So mixing here PHP with AngularJS is a bad practice. Does that mean that this example is irrelevant? No, in real life this happens all the time. Some older PHP app gets extended with some fancy AngularJS and boom, you have just genetically engineered a monster. You can test for AngularJS expression injections by using something simple like 1 plus 1. If the result shows 2 instead of the curly braces, then you likely have an AngularJS or a similar framework injection. Ok, so let's start. Let's first explore why alert doesn't work. By looking at AngularJS internals. Open the developer console and then go to the sources tab. On the left you can see available JavaScript source code files and in the center you see the actual JavaScript code. To the right you can find stuff like the call stack, the variable scope, breakpoints, etc. Which is important when you debug JavaScript code and step through it. We will make use of that shortly. And at the bottom, maybe you have to hit escape first to open it, you have a console where you can type in JavaScript code. If you pause at a breakpoint, you have access in that console to all the variables at this point in the execution. Before we execute it, let's quickly take a look at the AngularJS code. This is not a minified version, meaning everything is nicely commented and indented. I've also modified the code by adding the keyword debugger in different places. Those are like breakpoints. When JavaScript executes that statement, it will stop execution right there and we can look at the state of the variables, etc. Ok, now let's execute the expression by submitting this form. The site loads, executes AngularJS, the expression gets evaluated and we hit our first breakpoint. Whoa. 